So this video is going to be a little bit of TMI video because I'm obviously going to be talking about the JJ. but these are things that you need to know because no one told me about these things and I was actually very surprised going through it and um, I didn't do enough research myself before the postpartum stage. All I did was read up about childbirth because that was what I feared the most but now looking back childbirth for me it was a walk in the park and I should have research more into postpartum. So what we're going to talk about in this video is some basic postpartum care, some tips on what you should do and shouldn't do. And then we're going to go over the postpartum essentials, things that you need, things that the hospital provided me, and then things that I had to go out and buy on my own. And then lastly, we're going to wrap it up with just some other minor postpartum things that I regret doing or not doing so that I am more prepared the next time around. What is the perineal? Perineal is the area between your JJ and your butthole, that area. So perineum is the muscle between that area. So I'm gonna be using those two words interchangeably. So if you are giving birth naturally through the vagina, so it doesn't matter if you have like a first degree tear or a fourth degree tear, you will experience some sort of pain, soreness, or discomfort. First degree is minor tear. It just affects the skin. And you know, obviously the lower the degree of the tear, the faster your healing time will be. So the second degree tear is where it affects the skin and the muscle. So the perineum muscle is where it gets affected. Third degree tear is where it goes past that into your butthole basically. It affects the anal sphincter, which is the muscle that controls your anus. Fourth degree tear is just beyond that. So don't be afraid, don't freak out. It is most common to have a first or second degree tear. I personally got a second degree tear and the average healing time for most people is six to eight weeks. So for me, it took about eight weeks. What does it feel like down there after giving birth? It felt like a truck hit it. I'm not even gonna sugarcoat it guys. It hurt like a so the main sensation that I had down there was extreme soreness and itchiness. So the itchiness is from the stitches and for the soreness, man, it is extreme soreness for like weeks. So like the first two weeks, it's just straight soreness and then gradually it gets better and it just feels like tender after that. The best tip that I can give you guys is after giving birth, try to lie down as much as you can limit sitting as much as possible the more pressure you're putting on your you know butt and vag area the perineal it just hurts so much so if you can lie down do it as much as you can rest as much as you can like try not to sit for long periods because it hurts so you'll be bleeding very heavily for the first two weeks or so and then after that it'll taper off into like a normal period to like a lighter period um, gradually over time but I mean everything you had in there for nine months is you know just exiting your body your uterus so yeah if that's expected so whatever you do after you use the restroom do not wipe down there you just want to you know grab some toilet paper and pat dry it i mean if you poop yeah you can wipe because that's from the back another thing that your doctor will advise is no sex for six to eight weeks you'll have your postpartum checkup with your ob and then they'll give you the clear when you can start having sex again but usually it's around six to eight weeks to be honest i wasn't in a rush because um let me tell you we were both very sleep deprived because we have a newborn here you know um just first time parents newborns not sleeping and then i gotta be up through the night breastfeeding learning how to breastfeed like i'm not in a rush and another thing that you should not be using is a tampon you know i love using tampons when i'm on my period because it's just easier cleaner more comfortable to wear but no tampons during the postpartum recovery stage and then the last basic care tip is to remember to hydrate a lot you know you're losing a lot of fluids you just got to make sure that you're hydrating and especially if you're breastfeeding you need to hydrate a lot so those are the main basic care postpartum things that you need to know and then now i'm going to go over the essentials and what each essential is and then i'm also going to show you guys how to layer your postpartum pad so this is what the hospital gave me most hospitals will give you this so all you do is fill this up with warm water and then pretty much every time after you use the restroom since you can't wipe you just use this and 
you know, spray down there. It kind of did the job, but not well. I bought this Freedom Mom one. Same concept. It's basically like a bidet, but for your JJ. So much better, you guys. Like, if you don't get anything else from this video, this is what you need to get. I promise you will not regret this because look at look at this. So when you're sitting, you have to aim at your JJ downwards like this, and this just points straight down. So here I am, you know, trying to hover over the toilet seat and trying to aim like in this direction. But this, this just makes so much more sense because this tube angles up. All you gotta do is aim like this and it just shoots up. When you're not using it, you just push it down like that and it's compact. And it also comes with a little bag to put it in. So you keep it, you know, sanitary in case you need to go somewhere. So because this thing was so good, next time I give birth, this is what's going in my hospital bag. So I'll make sure I put together a what's in my hospital bag. Second time mom edition. So mesh underwear. Look how sexy this looks. This is what the hospital gave me. So, oh, quick tip guys. Don't overpack your hospital bag like I completely did. I overpacked my suitcase or duffel bag or whatever it was. It was stupid. I went in there to get like one thing, the baby's outfit. I wore the same outfit I went in there home and I stayed in my hospital gown for however long I was at the hospital for. Like don't overpack your stuff okay? because you need that room to pack all these free hospital stuff that they're gonna give you. Whatever they stock in there for you in the bathroom, just take it because it's there for you, you know, you're not stealing. Because, you know, free stuff, like, hello, you know, technically not free. You know, you have insurance and you paid for it already, so. This is the mesh underwear that came from the hospital. It just came in one size, so this was kind of big for me, but it helps because, you know, you don't have a flat belly after giving birth. I mean, I still look like I was like six months pregnant afterwards because, I mean, hello, it took nine months to stretch out. It's not gonna, you know, bounce back to a flat tummy like, um, overnight and I've never had a flat tummy anyway. So yeah, whatever. It's breathable and it's stretchy. It's not restricting your belly area and putting pain on there. And it's big enough so that you can wear a jumbo pad and all that stuff in here. So this is just the generic white mesh underwear from the hospital. This here is also a postpartum underwear. I like this so much better than this. I don't mind this because it was free and these are all disposable by the way so once you get them dirty you just um, toss it out so um, i had both and i love them but i do prefer this over this so this is also a stretcher material and um, it's also high-waisted they're both high-waisted because they stretch and um, it's good because it just kind of keeps everything all tucked in there but what i like about this more so than this one is this area right here so this area right here supports the pad because you'll be wearing a big jumbo pad and you'll have like stuff all layered up on there so this really helps keep everything in there in place so when you're moving around standing up sitting down lying down it all feels safe in, in one area versus this which things kind of like shift around in there so i do have a slight preference for this freedom mom postpartum underwear versus the free hospital one, but I have both. So another thing that most hospitals will provide are the long pads. They're like jumbo pads. I've never used a pad that big ever in my life. I actually don't have any on me because I think I used it all up. So I think I grabbed enough for exactly two weeks. And then after that, I didn't need those long pads anymore. Just used like regular maxi like long pads after that. So after the two weeks postpartum, you just want to make sure you have different size of pads, long pads to medium pads to like smaller pads because gradually you'll just bleed less and less. Dermoplast. So this is for the pain and itch sensation that you'll have. I use this for about four to six weeks and the hospital gave me this and I used it all and then long went out to CVS to buy a couple more of these. All you have to do is hold it at an angle and um, spray it from front to back. Yep, that's it. And it gives like a cooling sensation and it just alleviates the pain and especially the itchiness. This helps a lot with that. Which hazel pads. So this one I just picked up at CVS, I think. So the hospital gave us some witch hazel pads, like a small pack. You have to use several of these when you're layering your pad. So I went through it pretty fast and um, I had to go out and get another one. So if you don't know what hitch hazel, 
Hitch Hazel. If you don't know what Witch Hazel pads are, they're medicated pads that are cooling pads. So again, it this also helps with pain relief. And if you have hemorrhoids after giving birth, which is actually pretty common, I never had hemorrhoids in my life, but I had hemorrhoids after giving birth, and this helps with the hemorrhoids. In case you don't know what hemorrhoids are, they're like swollen and inflamed veins through your rectum because you know you're straining and pushing so hard to push the baby out and then sometimes it just swells up and then you have hemorrhoids and then it hurts to poop next on the list is hydrocortisone cream i don't have any hydrocortisone cream on me because i use it all up i have just this cortisone one um just to show you an example of what it usually looks like it just comes in this like white tube you can find anywhere any drugstore so the hydrocortisone is a just a medicated cream topical that you layer on your pad helps with the pain and it also helps with um, easing the inflammation down there so the hospital gave me a small tube but i did have to go out and buy extra ice packs if the hospital gives you this grab as many as you can because this is from the hospital and this is so helpful i use this every single day for about a week or so when it was like very very sore down there it's an ice pack you know what an ice pack does it's a cooling sensation it just helps alleviate the pain but a lot like it feels good so it has a an adhesive tape here you just tape it to your mesh underwear pad and um, that's it you just sit on it all right so yeah i'm not gonna open it because um once you open it and shake it up it starts to you know freeze and then i think it works for about like 20 minutes or so and then that's it you toss it this was very helpful for about like the first week after giving birth so this is what my hospital provided me obviously every hospital is different so do your research see what the hospital provides but this is what my hospital gave me this thing is a medical sits bath this just goes over the toilet seat you lift the toilet seat up and you put this in you fill up warm water about halfway and you sit in and soak your perineal in here it's recommended that you do a sits bath daily for about 20 minutes or so for two to four weeks this is so helpful you guys it helps you know alleviate the pain the soreness that you have and also the itchiness from the stitches so not only is it for pain relief but the warm water soaking in warm water helps reduce inflammation and the swelling so faster healing and then it also relaxes the perineum muscle from the tear lastly it keeps the area clean because when you're in the shower it's Again, you shouldn't be wiping or rubbing while you're in the shower. So this will keep it clean. So that way it just makes your shower easier. Just, you know, body rinse and you're good. So usually you can just put warm salt water in there. Um, salt, you know, heals the wound. I did that and I also bought this. This is the Herbal Sits Bath by Earth Mama. So this is what it looks like. It looks like a tea bag. After filling up the sits bath with warm water, you just pop one of these tea bags in there for about like five minutes, let it steep, and that's it, you take it out. You can also cool these in the fridge and apply it as a moist pad. But um, I never use it as that because I had ice packs. So like I alternate between this and the warm salt water, but it does really help and if it just feels good just to relax in there and you're not putting pressure on your perineum so it's like floating in water so it just feels really nice definitely alleviates the pain so the other essential that i recommend is stool softener because you know you gotta poop after giving birth let me tell you the first poop after giving birth was the scariest shit of my life you know i wasn't even constipated when i took my first poop i just sat there and like was so afraid of pooping like i just took my sweet ass time pooping like i just wanted to like make sure these little turds come out as small as possible because i'm so scared to poop after giving birth down there because you know i don't want any stitches to pop out <laughs> but um no stitches popped out but it was still like a very very scary poop after giving birth just make sure you hydrate a lot and um take these stool softener trust me so i just wanted to mention that aside from postpartum essentials that the hospital provide my hospital also provided baby newborn care essentials so just real quick i'm just going to read off what they gave us they gave us a pack of newborn diapers i think about 20 something in there they gave us one small pack of baby wipes and then some those little baby trial size 
baby shampoo, just like those standard like Johnson & Johnson baby shampoo. And then they also gave us the booger sucker, you know, those blue bulb booger sucker that every baby brings home with them at the hospital. All right, so now I'm gonna show you guys how to layer your pad. Here, I'm just using a uh, regular size pad right now since I don't have any of those long hospital jumbo pads. Then you layer these witch hazel pads on there. You know, kind of looks like you're building a sandwich. This looks like provolone cheese from like Subway or something. So yes, you layer about three or four of this across and then you add the hydrocortisone on here. I don't want to waste medication, so I'm just putting lotion to show you guys an example of what it looks like. But that is what it looks like. And then you just stick this to your mesh underwear and that's it. So this is what you do every time. So Ray's awake. Come here, come say hi. Come say hi. She's standing behind the camera right now. Ray, come here. Other things that I just want to mention that I regret doing during the postpartum stage was allowing visitors to visit way too soon. I came home from the hospital and then we had a bunch of visitors come the next morning. Don't get me wrong, I am very grateful and very appreciative for all my friends that came to visit us. And you know, obviously everyone had good intentions. They were very excited to meet my firstborn. They brought us food, they brought us lunch, they cooked us food. I mean like very, very grateful. But I think if I were to do it again, I will definitely hold off on that. Well, it's also COVID right now, so that's also a great excuse to hold off visitors. You don't realize how much rest and sleep you need during this time. Um, I mean, you're not getting any sleep, so the last thing you... <laughs> no, 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 what, honey? Can I get a hug? 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 Come say hi. 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 Hey, hey, come say hi. Can you say hi? Real quick. No. Okay, okay, sorry. Um, you don't realize how much rest, sleep, learning how to take care of a newborn time that you need instead of allowing visitors to come. I mean, it's not like I had to like cater to my visitors or anything, but you still want to be present in front of your visitors. So it was hard because like, you know, when it's time to breastfeed, you know, this is my first time, so I'm like still trying to struggle on how to pray still struggling on how to breastfeed like latching issues because it was literally a day after i came from came home from the hospital so we're still you know learning how to do that so then with guests there i would have to like take ray to a different room and like you know try to learn how to breastfeed and then yeah it was just a like, very um inconvenient kind of thing again don't get me wrong i am very appreciative of my friends and stuff that I visited but i would probably hold off like a month or so um, the next time around, maybe longer with COVID. And on the same note with the visitors, my in-laws at that time lived five minutes from us. I know they were excited because, you know, their only child, you know, just had a child. This is their only grandchild, but I felt very suffocated with my in-laws coming. The second I stepped foot into the house from the hospital, like literally my bags weren't even unpacked. I just took off my shoes and then they rolled up into the driveway. And um, I didn't have that time to learn how to take care of my baby. Like this is the time for me to try to learn how to be a mom. And I couldn't do that because they just came over and literally snatched my baby from me, um, you know, coming over offering their help but nothing was helpful like i don't need your help to hold a baby like i need to hold my own baby i need to try to rock my baby to sleep i need to learn how to latch and breastfeed my baby i don't need your help holding a baby if you want to come over and help me like do the dishes make lunch make dinner clean the house do the laundry that's help but not holding my baby while i go clean the house trying to during post pardon recovery stage. I don't get into details about that in this video. That's like a whole nother video to talk about postpartum and in-laws. You guys want to hear about that? I will be glad to put together a video. You know, I'll spill the tea on the postpartum and in-laws situation. Don't get me wrong, I don't hate them. It's just I had a terrible postpartum experience because of my in-laws. It was a very um, tough time for me. Um, during postpartum. So sorry if I went off tangent because I'm trying to focus on Ray right now, playing with my Sharpie markers and making sure she's not 
drawing on my furniture. But hopefully you guys found this video useful for your postpartum care and essentials. Everything mentioned here will be linked below in the description box for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. If there was something that I left out that you think will help another mom, please comment below and it will probably help me too because I'm going to go through that postpartum stage again. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.